in these videos I'll be showing you how to modify your Epson P600 printer to use it as either a DTG printer or a flatbed printer. The first step here is to disassemble the Epson, then we're going to modify it, and then we'll have to build a base unit. Um, starting with the Epson disassembly, it's always very important to make sure you start up the Epson printer when you first get it, boot it up with the inks, do a couple test prints, make sure everything's working 100%, watch the printer, see how it operates, how the paper feeds, how the different trays and stuff like that come out and how that affects what happens with the printer. Just to get a good idea of how the printer operates and to also just make sure it works before you take it apart so you know you're starting with a 100% good unit. Um, another thing to think about is make sure you're in a very clean environment getting dirt in inside on the encoder strips or the print head rail is very bad when you're making cuts to the Epson printer you need to make sure you don't get any um, dust or debris on the the rail that the print head rides on it'll get caught in the grease and then it'll slow your print head down um, another thing to be concerned of is static electricity if you're working in your house and you're wearing socks on carpet you gotta be careful that you're not dragging your feet, getting static electricity that could discharge and ruin something. Those are kind of the main things. Um, always double check your connections when you're putting it back together. You don't want to fire it up and put power to it if one of your ribbon cables are incorrectly put into the socket or if they're sideways always make sure you power off the unit and unplug it from the wall uh, when you're disassembling it or doing any other thing to it uh, they're expensive printers and they're extremely easy to make a small little mess up and it could cost you a lot of money so we want to be careful with that uh, the first video here we are just going to take off the covers and get started with that so we need a phillips head screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver we we can start here with taking this tray off you just kind of get in there and pull it out uh, you can keep it or throw it away and then I'm going to spin the printer around most of the screws for the cover are in the back yeah, same here you can keep this tray some people use this as a cover later on uh, I usually throw it away so I just pull it and break it off if you want to keep it a little better so you don't break the edges, you can use the flat screwdriver and pry it out of there. Um, we want to get all the blue tape off, that's really not necessary. But then on the covers, you just want to start going around. Uh, there's a black screw here. Make sure you keep these for later. And then you can just pull on the cover. And it's going to well, actually, it's not going to slide back until we get that off. Sorry about that. I'm not used to doing videos. We're going to want to take these screws out. There's another one in the middle here. And we get another one on the edge. Now let's take this one off right here. Now that should be all the covers. You can kind of wiggle and pull this off. It's got some tabs right here that catch. Uh, we'll just keep that for later in case we want to put it back on. Now, as I was trying before, you can just slide these side covers right off. Just slide that off like that. Put it aside for later. Um, now you're going to see some silver screws, some big ones right here. Take that off. There's another one on the other side. Let's spin it around. <clears throat> These pieces right here, you just kind of pull on the bottom and pull up. They catch on the lip on the top. Underneath those, you got two, a screw up here. Yeah, screw down there. Take this big one out here. All right. Now 
and spin it around. Top screw, and you got the bottom screw, big one again. Now right here you have the ribbon cables for the LCD display up here. You're going to want to carefully pull these ribbon cables out and take note that number one is on the top, number two is on the bottom. You're going to want to get them back obviously in the same place. You can see the connectors are facing forward on that. Make a mental note, or you can rewatch this video. Some people like to take pictures as they're going. Uh, you got one more screw right here that's holding the front panel. Make sure you want to keep that. Now, getting the front panel off, you just kind of got to be careful. It's it's got some catches in there. That was a little less careful. Uh, you gotta reach back. I don't know if you can see here, but there's this cable right here going to the lid sensor. You wanna undo that and pull that out so that so we don't have that wire connected. And then you just kind of pull on the inside and pop these out. And now we have the display off. Set that aside for later. And now really we're we're ready to pull the top cover off. Just be very careful with these cables. Kind of want to push them back through the hole. Make sure we don't ruin them or trip them. And then you can just go up and over with the cover. And put that later. And there you have it. And you kind of have just everything. Uh, the guts are all visible now and we can continue to take it apart that's kind of the main to get the covers off take some pictures if you want for reference uh, so you can see how things are but that gets you a good start